All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Coming on with this part two. Um, still talking about Amazing Grace. I'm going to go ahead and close it out with this video. If you call part one, then this video is going to really make more sense to y'all. So um, if you just happen to be looking at this and haven't seen part one, then you're probably going to be like, well, what, what you talking about, JT? So y'all know I was going to come back and finish this um, because we was talking about John Newton. John Henry Newton and um, Amazing Grace and what he meant, you know, what, what he was showing us in the song. And I know some of y'all probably saying in the part video, I mean part one video, JT, you was, man, you went too hard about the dude, man. You didn't give the dude no credit, you know, he got delivered or whatever, such and such this. Um, y'all, let me tell you something. What I was doing in part one is saying exactly what this man said about his own self. And see, this is why I can respect real women and real men when they tell you this is how I used to be. A lot of us problem is we don't want to tell the truth about ourselves. This man let it be known how he was. Just like me when I'm on camera or off camera. If you see me talking to somebody, you're going to see me keeping it real saying, yeah, I did this. I was a part of that. I was messed up. So that's all I was doing in part one was just, now one thing I do, I have a little loud voice. I'm kind of strong when I talk. But um, I was just laying it out there the same way he laid it out there. This man was messed up. And um, and that's what the whole point of this song is, y'all. About the amazing grace. That's the way he expressed the way he felt toward the most time. You know, that's why I was breaking it down that way. Um, but the reason why I want to do this part two and close out with this too, because it's so many Christians... Um, that don't understand what I'm saying about Amazing Grace don't have a clue um, that man showed, John showed that he was a vile person you know his heart was really messed up y'all he was man when you start looking at what happened when you get to a point where you see a lot of slavery this man transported slaves from we could say Africa to the West Indies when you study and um that's why I made that statement I said in part one. I wonder did he get religion or did he get a relationship truly with the most high? Because a lot of people call their deliverance religion. I got religion now. That's why you hear a lot of people say, I'm a, don't make me lose my religion. You can't I don't say that. I don't that's something I don't never say because I don't have no religion. I got a relationship and can't nobody make me lose my relationship with the father. I lost religion just to gain the relationship. Some of y'all will catch that later on. So this man was just expressing his true feelings. And he was expressing what the Most High had done for him, y'all. So when you look at Amazing Grace and look at Newton, uh, John Henry Newton, he wrote about what the Father done for him because he was reflecting back on his life and how messed up he was. And, and, and when you look at it, this song became one of the greatest hymns ever. Because it hit so hard and it's still hitting hard right now. So in other words, you look at this song. He was saying the Most High brought a, a wretched sinner to become a new creature in Christ, born again. I like to say born from up above, you know. So Newton calls God's grace simply just amazing. Because what the Most High done for him. And he realized that you can't get that gift from nobody in this world. That's a supernatural gift that come a gift that comes from up above. Can't nobody deliver you but the most high. That's why he said, I once was blind, but now I see. He wasn't talking about physically uh, being blind. He was he was talking about he was so blinded and dead in his sins, y'all. That he was just messed up. Wretched old man he was. And that's why I tied in in part one the word wretched being also referred to as hoish. A lot of people don't want to teach that part of that word. Um, that's why I made the statement in part one how, you know, women were called wretched. You know, wretched hoes, but you also had male hoes. Wretched could also be meaning prostitute and, and, and messed up heart like that a lot of times. But, you know, that's something a lot of people don't like to say about that part of that word. Um, but, you know, it's each to their own how you believe and what you believe. So we just wanted to kind of come back and um, close out with this part two um, because I know some of y'all going to be like man you went too hard in that part one video but I, one thing about me if I'm looking at some just, let me just give an example if, if Mitty Man right now was to write me up a paper about his life 
and he wrote it raw just the way he wanted to and lay it out and he tell me JT I want you to do a video on it and, and you know explain this don't you know I'm gonna look at it just like many man wrote it if he leave harsh words in there that's the same way I'm gonna read it I'm gonna leave them same words in there I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and if, if he say JT I was a hoe I'm gonna say many man was a hoe Mitty Man was a drunk. Mitty Man was a thug. Mitty Man was just low down, rotting in dirt. Just, just, just toe up. Am I talking about him? I'm just telling the truth of what he used to be. Just like if I was to give him the, something to read about me. He was JT. Yep, JT was messed up. JT, JT was fighting with demons. JT was drunk. And I would say, Mitty Man, amen. The problem is most people can't handle when you talk like that. See, I'd rather, I'd rather tell you straight up and real versus trying to lie to you and sugarcoat something. That ain't never been my style. So with that being said, y'all, y'all have a wonderful, blessed day. And uh, until the next time, the Lord, I say the same. See you on the next one. Peace out.